How's it going everybody? Jason here. Thanks for checking out the channel today. So I'm going to show you three ways that you can automate stuff in Bubble. So suppose you want to run batches or update site stats or send newsletters out on certain time schedules and stuff like that. There's three ways that you can do that. These are all really simple and easy. Each of them have their pros and cons. So uh, there's timestamps below if you want to switch to the one you're most interested in. So first of all, the three of them are using the recurring event option in Bubble. The second one would be using database triggers. And the third one would be using an API workflow that reschedules itself in the future. So let's get into these options. The first one is using a backend workflow that reschedules itself. So on my production site, I've got a button here that starts my stat automation and it basically just updates stats throughout my site. And I click this once and it's very simple. It just runs this workflow action. This workflow action does what it needs to do and then it reschedules itself. And here's what that looks like. So this is my API workflow. So this is only going to run on my live site because of this. And the reason why I do that is, uh, first I go and collect all of the stats that I use. I scatter these throughout my site. So I'll do things like, here's the number of things that I use that, that our users have saved this week. Here's the total number of digital credentials we've issued, stuff like that. So there's a lot of searches and there are a lot of compound searches here where I'm merging searches from a bunch of different stats to update that. So this is a very expensive workflow to run and I don't want this to run in real time and I don't really need for it to run in real time. So it runs this workflow. It makes the changes to those stats. I've got a stat thing that just stores all of this stuff. So when I want to pull this data out, I can just pull one record. I don't have to do searches in real time. And then what I do is I just have a simple log that tracks whenever this thing runs. And then I also send an email for now to tell me that the site stats were updated. Um, I've got another update here where it makes some other changes to some other stats. And then here's where that recurring trigger happens. So I just schedule the exact same workflow. I use the uh, current date plus one day. So this basically runs every 24 hours from the time I click the button. Now the good thing with this is once you deploy a site, it will still continue to run that workflow because it's still sitting inside of the workflow scheduler batch. So you never have to worry about going back to the admin and clicking that button again. But if for whatever reason it just stops working, you know, say bubble went down or something went wonky, you've got a button in your admin where you can restart it. Here's the second way you can do it. And this is using database triggers. So if you are in your backend workflows and you go to general new database trigger event, this will fire every time there is a change to a record in whatever thing you specify. So for example, if I look at this trigger, I'm using my event attendees thing. And this is basically a join table between a list of events and people who've attended them. And you can see there's a couple of different options you can do here. So you've got two different data sources. The thing before change is access the data uh, of the record before you've made that change and then access the data of that record now after it's been changed. So you can do a, a comparison basically, and you can use whichever data you need to accomplish the rest of your workflow. So the reason why I have this one in place is because I want to keep my event stats updated. Whenever somebody registers for an event or they cancel or they move to another one, I want to make sure that my event counts are spot on. So this triggers every single time. I don't have a constraint here, but I'll show you an example of a constraint in a second. So this just runs a simple update uh, workflow uh, API update to uh, um, basically run my event stats and update it. So it sends whatever event is attached to that record. And then there's a workflow that goes and captures a bunch of other stats and data about that event and then keeps it updated. I have a habit of creating my own logging. So I've got a workflow activity thing. And basically this just tells me who invoked that uh, workflow. What was the name of the trigger or the workflow? What were they trying to do? What was the result? This is just in case anything goes wonky or if I suddenly get a spike in my workload, I can go to my report screen and I can see what might be going crazy. And then I don't have to log into the admin and look at their god awful uh, API workflow logging. So 
that's one example of how you can use triggers. I'll give you another example because this one is important when you want to, to use conditions for your trigger. So suppose you only want this to trigger when a new record is created. This will prevent your workflow from running constantly. So imagine you have an example where you've got a database trigger and there's like 20 steps in your workflow. You might not want that to run every time, but every single time that record is modified, whatever it is, it's going to run that whole workflow. So put this only when, use whatever your thing is, and you want whenever that thing before change is empty. So that means the record did not exist, then this will fire. So this one I only want to run when a new record is created. And basically what this does, it's a one question survey to users. And then this just captures uh, sentiment from ChatGPT. So it runs this workflow, it sends the comment over, and I, I have a little bot that only creates sentiment and it sends me back a one word answer. But I only want this to run when records are created. So that's database triggering and there are a million different types of things that you can do to make sure that your data is always updated. Probably one of the most important things is if you've got an existing site and you make a change that has a, uh, either different tables or different relationships or whatever, you can use database triggers and you can update data in real time. So let's just say you added some data to um, you know, the user table and I've got 13,000 users. I don't want to have to run a script to update 13,000 records to set a default value or something like that. You can use a database trigger that says when before change this field was empty, then do this action and populate it. And then you can have that run just when the user is logged in. So basically your 13,000 records will be modified as people log into your site. This assumes you don't need that extra field and data for something else somewhere in your site, but that's way, one way where you can cut down on workflow usage. So the third option is to use Bubble's built-in recurring event. So in general, you go new recurring event, and let's just call this one test, and I'm gonna use my user thing for it. The main difference with this and using schedule API workflow is you're limited to the number of recurring events you can use based on the plan that you're on. So let's just say I've got something here. I'm not going to put any workflow actions in here. Uh, you still have to trigger this the first time because this gives you the option to start and cancel a workflow. So if I go back to say my site stats and I wanted to replace this with this recurring event, the action that I would search for would be set or cancel a recurring event. And then now I've got whatever events I have in the list here. I've got, I'll, I'll run this on current user because that is the recurring event thing that I used. And frequency, here's all the different frequencies you have for it. Now, Bubble doesn't have an explicit stop this action option, but the way you stop it is you select none and whatever they currently have scheduled, it will stop those things from running in the future. So if you want to start scheduling something, you have to pick one of these options and then stop it. You press none and then start date. You can choose whatever date it is. Um, so if you wanted it to start on the current date, you know, maybe plus 10 minutes or something like that. Um, you can set that as well. And then you could create another workflow action to start and stop it. All right, so that's three ways you can automatically keep stuff updated in Bubble. They all have their pros and cons. If you need data updated in real time, database triggers is the way to go. If you want the most flexibility, using a workflow API that reschedules itself can give you the maximum flexibility. And if you want something that gives you the ability to start and stop those workflows, then you would have to use the recurring event one. So that might be best if you decide you want the freedom to be able to stop something. Because if you do use the recurring workflow event where it's rescheduling itself, you'll have to redeploy your app to stop that. So you'd have to go in, you'd have to take the steps out uh, from your backend workflow, the one that reschedules itself and then redeploy your app. So all of these will have pros and cons, but for all three, I highly recommend anything you do automated in Bubble, you create your own workflow log because then at least you've got a, a, uh, an admin page or something where you can see these things being scheduled because it's very easy to forget that you've automated something. And I've been guilty of that in the past. I get the email that there's been a workload spike and I'm like, oh crap, there was an old workflow that I was running uh, constantly or a database trigger that I was running constantly. I forgot to stop or take out or something like that. So remember to hit like and subscribe. Drop a comment below if you've got a question about how you automate stuff in Bubble. I'll see you next time.